Welcome to the Learn Soldering Workshop by TSJ Electronics. So what is soldering? Soldering is how we join electrical components and wires together. When solder is heated, it melts and flows over other metals. When it cools, we are left with an electrical connection between two or more components. When it comes to soldering, there are only a few tools you need. The most important is the soldering iron. I highly recommend a temperature controlled iron. Cheap ones can be purchased for as little as $50 online, or you can spring for a higher quality station for around $100 to $150. Along with your soldering station, you should get either a soldering sponge or brass wire tip cleaner. During the soldering process, you will often need to wipe the tip of your soldering iron clean, and then reapply fresh solder to the tip. Another accessory for your soldering setup is soldering iron tips. Tips come in different shapes and sizes to make specific soldering jobs easier. For beginners, I recommend the classic cone soldering tip but my favorite for general purpose soldering is the bent conical tip. The bent tip allows us to get better angles on the metal during the soldering process, and I find it to be the best general purpose tip. When it comes to solder, there are two main choices, leaded solder or lead free. I highly recommend using the lead free solder. It is much safer for you and the environment. The only drawback is lead free solder is a little more difficult to work with and has a higher melting point at 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Another must have for soldering is flux. Flux is commonly sold in small tubes like this. Flux is a medium which helps solder flow and removes impurities that cause oxidation and weak solder joints. The last tool we absolutely need for soldering is a small pair of wire cutters. These allow us to trim the leads of our solder joints. Trimming the leads decreases the chance of creating unwanted electrical connections and decreases the chance that we will poke ourselves with a long wire on the back of a PCB. Soldering a point of connection between two or more components is called a solder joint. There are several types of solder joints you should be aware of and be able to identify. First, there's good solder joints. A good solder joint will look like this. The pad and component are covered and there is a small Hershey Kiss shape to the joint. There are no gaps or holes in the solder joint. Too much solder. Too much solder is not the end of the world for the work we are doing here today. But if your solder joints look like this, try feeding less solder. To fix a solder joint with too much solder, you can add flux, heat, and use your soldering iron to wipe away the excess solder. Not enough solder. If there are gaps and holes between the component lead and the pad, we need to use more solder. To fix this, you can simply heat up the area and try again. Cold solder joints. If you do not allow the component and pad to heat sufficiently, the solder will not make a solid connection by bonding to the pad. To fix this, add flux and re-solder the joint. Be sure to use enough heat. You may need to hold the iron to the pad longer during heating or turn up the temperature of your soldering iron. Too much heat. Apply the soldering iron for a shorter period of time or turn down the temperature. And the last, but most important, is a short. A short is an unwanted connection between components caused by too much solder. This is a very common problem when beginning soldering, but luckily it's an easy fix. To fix this, add flux to the short and then heat the middle of the connection with your soldering iron. When the solder is completely melted, quickly wipe away your soldering iron and this should remove much of the excess solder and fix the short. When it comes to soldering, safety is very important. So here are some general safety rules to keep you safe during the soldering process. Never touch the soldering iron past the handle. These get incredibly hot and will burn you. Always put the soldering iron back into its holster when not in use. Never leave it on any surface than its intended holder. Always turn off your soldering station if you leave for any reason. Always make sure your soldering area is free of clutter. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, or mouth when soldering. Soldering components are dirty and may contain lead or other nasty things. For our kits and components, we only use lead-free components, but it's a good practice to treat every component as if it were leaded. Solder in well-ventilated areas. Open a window and turn on a fan. Soldering fumes can cause an irritation of the eyes and throat. Lastly, and most importantly, always wash your hands with soap before and after soldering. This is our Learn to Solder Workshop board number one. When working, it is a simple LED circuit. Pushing the buttons on either side allows us to turn on a light. Don't be afraid to ruin this board or make mistakes. There is no way to learn soldering without burning out a few components and ruining a few boards along the way but follow the instructions and advice of this video carefully and I know you will do great. So let's open up our soldering kits. Inside we have boards one, two, three, and a lot of components. Let's take a look at board one and define some different parts of the board. First is the silk screen. 
Silkscreen is white or black printed epoxy that we use to write on our board. We use silkscreen to define essential information on our boards like component values and logos. Component footprints. Component footprints are silkscreen 2D representations of the components that belong in its place. For every footprint, there should be a component. For example, if we look at our green board, this little rectangle here means that this is a footprint for a resistor. The R1 above it is its component's name, and the 2.2K text in the middle indicates the value of the resistor. Footprints can tell us which component belongs, its value, its name, its shape, and other essential information. Traces. Do you see that there's two shades of green on this board? There's the dark green background and the lighter green lines running through the board. These lines are copper traces, wires built into the board that connect our circuit and make it work. Pads. These circular silver parts are called the component pads. These pads will join the component legs to the copper traces when we solder the board. Now that we've reviewed safety information and know a little bit about our board, let's get soldering. Start by turning on your soldering iron. I like to set mine to about 575 degrees Fahrenheit. As you solder, you will figure out which temperature settings are best for you. If the solder is taking too long to heat and it's cooling into disfigured blobs, turn up the heat. If your soldering iron is so hot that the solder is jumping or spitting off the tip, then you need to turn your iron's temperature down. When soldering, always make sure to apply solder to your iron tip, even when not using it. This keeps the tip from oxidizing and will prolong the life of your iron tips. In between soldering components, gently wipe away the old solder and reapply a small amount of fresh solder before soldering. Let's get started. These small rectangles are resistor footprints. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 resistors. So let's take out 8 resistors from our bag. To get the resistor on our board, we bend it into a U-shape and then gently insert both legs into the board. Resistors are non-polar components, meaning both sides are exactly the same. You can put it in any direction. Flip the board around and then pull the resistor all the way through, and then bend the pins. The resistor should be flat against the board and secure. We don't want it to move during the soldering process. Now we place our board upside down. The most important part of soldering is heating. When we solder, we want as much of our soldering iron to touch both the pad and the component leg as possible. So do not use the very tip of the soldering iron. Angle it so that as much of the iron as possible is touching both the pad and the component leg. Here's our first solder joint. Touch the iron to the pad and component leg and allow it to heat for a few seconds. Feed solder into the point where the iron, the pad, and the component are touching. Remove the solder, heat for an additional second, and then remove the soldering iron. Now we do the same for the other side. Touch the iron component and pad, let heat, feed solder, remove solder, heat an addition second, and then remove iron. Now let's take a look at our solder joints. Compare your solder joints to the chart on our soldering information sheet and see if you spot any problems. Let's talk about flux real quick. Flux is a medium that allows solder to flow better and removes impurities from the solder. You can even use flux on unsoldered component and pad to ensure a clean solder joint. You do not have to use flux on every solder joint for these projects, but let's give it a try just to see the difference. Let's put in our next resistor. Bend the legs and turn the board over. Apply flux to both solder pads. Heat, feed solder, continue heating, and remove the soldering iron. Now take a look at your solder joints. See if you notice any different from the ones we just did with flux and the ones we did without. Flux generally makes soldering an easier job. However, then we have to clean up the flux. So in order to clean flux, use a small amount of isopropyl alcohol and a microfiber cloth. For the rest of the board, you can choose to use flux when soldering or not. For our demonstration, I'm not going to. We're just going to continue soldering the board as is. Just so you know, our solder actually has a little bit of flux in it. So now that we've finished our soldering joints, it's time to clip the legs. Bend the legs straight up and clip them at the top of the solder joint using the wire cutters. Solder the rest of the resistors at your own pace, and when you're finished, we'll move on to the integrated circuits. Open the bag labeled 4017IC. ICs stand for integrated circuits, and these are polar components. That means that both ends are different, and they must be inserted with proper orientation on the board. 
If you look at the chip, you can see the markings on either end. This little semicircle chipped out of the end represents the front of the IC. If you look at the footprint of the board, you can see the same semicircle etched into the silk screen. Make sure when you put your chip in the board that the semicircle on the chip and the semicircle on the footprint line up. To get chips in the board, you will need to gently bend the pins of the chip inward. This may take some trying, but just keep it up and eventually it will fit. Put all of the chips in. Make sure the semicircle of the IC lines up the semicircle of the footprint. Now that all our IC is in place, hold them in with your fingers and turn your board upside down. You may want to stick one or two PCBs under the other side of your board to prop it up. The most important thing is that our ICs lay flat during the soldering process. Now that our ICs are in, we need to tack them in place. This is where we solder in a corner of each IC so they don't move as we solder them. Now that our ICs are tacked in, tilt your board to the side and solder up the rows. Do one row at a time on one chip. When finished, rotate the board and do the exact same thing to the other side. 
Inspect your ICs for any bad solder joints. Look, keep an eye out for cold joints, shorts, and not enough solder. Now that we've finished the ICs, we're going to move on to the LEDs. For this board, we need 8 LEDs. So grab your favorite color combinations and let's get started. LEDs are polar components. They have a positive lead and a negative lead. The positive lead is the longer leg, and the negative lead is the shorter leg. Our LED footprints are these little circles, and they have the positive side labeled with a small plus sign. Insert your LED with the longer leg on the left side aligning with the positive plus sign. Push the LED all the way down until it's flush with the board. Now it's time to solder our LED. Apply the soldering iron, heat it up, feed solder, remove solder, remove the soldering iron. Be careful applying too much heat to the LEDs. Too much heat will cause the LEDs to burn out and they won't function properly. Now that we've done one LED, clip the legs and inspect the solder joint. If the solder joints look good, finish soldering the LEDs. You can solder the rest of the LEDs either doing them one by one like we just did or putting them all in at the same time. The advantage to putting them all in at the same time means the board will sit flat and the LEDs are less likely to move and be bent. Now let's move on to our push buttons. Grab the bag labeled switches and find our little rectangular friends. To put the push buttons on the board, we line the legs up with the through holes and firmly push them until they pop into place. If you bend or break a leg, don't sweat it. We all break some push buttons at first. Go ahead and put in both push buttons. Now flip our board over and solder in each leg. Now that our ICs, push buttons, LEDs, and resistors are finished, we have one last component the power jack. Find the bag labeled miscellaneous and pull out your female power jack. Place the jack at the top of the board and flip the board over. These components have more metal in them. This metal acts as a heat sink, so in order to solder these well, we will need to heat them up for a little longer than the other components. The pads are also larger and will require us to feed more solder. Apply the soldering tip to the pad Allow to heat for a few seconds. Feed in the solder. Remove solder and continue heating until the pad is completely covered. Now finish the remaining solder joints. Congratulations, you finished your first board. Grab the bag labeled power, attach the 9 volt to the connector, and plug it in. Your board should have six lights on. The two other lights are controlled through pushing the push buttons.